We don't feel old. We feel we young. We don't feel old. There aren't many of them out there. I'm 96. 97. 98. How old are you? 101. Only one in 10,000 of us, in fact, will defy all the odds and live the long, healthy lives that these folks have. What's the secret? I really don't have any clue. I don't have a secret. You have to ask up there. Well, down here, biologists are having a go, studying every aspect of these long-lived people to see if their elixir of life might be available to the rest of us. Let's hope. This is my mother, this is my father, this is a sister. Just Near Barzilai of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in Bronx, New York, has worked with this genetically distinct population of Ashkenazi Jews for the last eight years, wondering what do they have that the rest of us don't. They are born in the early 1900s. Many children are dying in epidemics of childhood diseases, so they survive already that. And then they get to middle age, and there are all the middle ages diseases. There is the cancer and the cardiovascular, and they don't get touched by that. And then they have to survive getting to 100. It's an incredible journey against odds. It wasn't really milk and honey, my life, but here I am. But none of them have exactly been following doctor's orders. I would say the opposite. Every day, French fries. Roast beef. <laughs> you can drink, but no mixed drinks, just scotch. There's no yogurt eater, there's no uh, vegetarian. 46 years of cigarette smoking. Yeah. And you're still, you're 101 years old. I'm still 101 and a half years old. <laughs> All the things that we tell our patients to do, they didn't do and it didn't bother them. They got there anyhow. Do you feel lucky that you've lived as long as you have? Of course. They did have help, though, as Barzilai discovered. There's an unusual history of longevity in their family. The younger sister of my father was 98, and my mother was 92. I still have an aunt. My mother's side of the family is alive. She's 101. This is a picture of my husband and this huge kiss after that we got married. My God. It's a wonderful Something picture. very special was protecting them from the environment and their own excesses. We have good genes. We owe it all to our mother and father. And when the team peered into their blood, it became clear what it was. The initial thing that was striking is that we're many, many people in the study had very high HDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is the good cholesterol. Good because it cleans up our blood vessels by schlepping the bad cholesterol away. So the more the merrier. But something else was going on with the HDL cholesterol. We saw that they are amazingly large at our, with our centenarians. It seems the bigger the HDL, the better. Perhaps because bigger HDL hauls away more bad stuff than smaller HDL does. 60% of the centenarians had these larger HDLs. So this became a major marker of exceptional longevity and also directed us to several of the genes that we tested. Barzilai smeared our centenarians' DNA onto chips loaded with cholesterol genes. This chip contained 500,000 variations that humans can have on their DNA. Barzilai found that three particular mutations in three different genes distinguished many of their DNA from the general population. And all those changes play a role in making HDL bigger and protecting against age-related disorders like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So then we feel more comfortable in saying, you know what, this is a longevity gene. The idea of a small number of longevity genes flies in the face of scientific wisdom, which has long held that aging involves hundreds, even thousands of genes all running amok. Show me wild time versus knockout. But that's never sat well with MIT's Leonard Guarenti, thanks to one bizarre but confirmed finding. Cut just about any organism's food supply by 30 to 40 percent, and it will live up to 50 to 60 percent longer.